Hi, Captain Steve for BoatTest.com, and today I'm on the new flagship of the three-boat Dauntless lineup by Boston Whaler, the 280 Dauntless. This has a lot of thoughtful features that we'll show you in another video, but this one is all about the performance and sea trial, so let's get right into it, starting with the features at the helm. Let's start right at the top of the panel with sea deck matting surrounding the compass that's mounted to the left-hand side of the console in line with the steering wheel, happy to see that. There's an inductive telephone charger plus connectivity just behind the panel itself. Acrylic 16-inch Simrad display. You can go with two 12-inch displays. There's a physical JL Audio volume knob, lockable glove storage along the side, electrical switches all grouped accordingly. Now, even though we have physical switches at the bottom of the panel, this board also has digital switching thanks to the C-Zone integration with the multifunction display. So we can literally control everything on the boat from this multifunction display right here. Simrad VHF, beverage holders both to the left and to the right. Now, this one has the joystick option. If you did not get this joystick option, there'd be another beverage holder here. And of course, we've got the digital engine controls. Trim tabs right alongside. The steering wheel is mounted to a tilt base. And I'm also glad to see that Boston Whaler always includes a steering knob. Down below is a foot rest. Of course, our engine kill switch. We've got windshield going up full length and to the sides. There's an electrically actuated vent at the top, bringing a lot of air into this helm area. The hardtop supports have integrated grab rails and the hardtop itself, six feet, 11 inches off the deck and it includes LED lighting, courtesy lighting. There's LED spreader lights fore and aft, e-box storage and life jacket storage. There's also an access panel for installations behind the console. Now let's take a look at this seat. At 42 inches, it's a double wide. It's got flip down armrests to both sides and individual flip down bolsters. This is the upgraded helm. The standard helm has the gel coat dash, the half windshield, the single engine control, and two beverage holders instead of one with a joystick. Now there are three cleats to either side of the boat, including I'm happy to see midship cleats, and they're all eight inch, of course, backed underneath. If we lift this up, we have storage for the swim ladder. Now not only do we have this storage access underneath, there's mechanical access as well, including the four batteries, seacocks, bilge pumps, live well pumps, and the engine steering pumps. Barrel bolts to both sides will allow us to lock this platform in either the up or down position. We've got a fresh water wash down and a raw water wash down right in the splash well. There's also a power pole option for the transom. The cockpit is self-draining with dual two-inch drain scuppers to both sides of the cockpit and these lead directly overboard. In the walkthrough, there's battery charger connectivity. Underneath this hatch, Boston Whaler has eliminated the forward seat, so now we can stand right up to this at waist level at 23 inches. There's a windlass, cleat right alongside, remote control, and there's a good drop to this windlass so that we don't have to get underneath and fiddle with the road locker all the time. Now let's talk about engine options. If you go with single engine, you can get up to 350 horsepower or 400 horsepower. Twin engine operations will be 225, 250, or 300 horsepower. From 250 up, you can get JPO with the joystick, and all are available in black and white. Put all those iterations together, and you come up with 17 different choices. As the Dauntless is such a hugely popular model, it's offered to both single engine and twin engine packages. Both run about even as far as orders are concerned, so we tested it both ways. First with the single 400 horsepower Merc, and then with twin 300s with JPO. Let's look over the results. With the single 400 turning a 15 by 15 prop and run up to 6500 RPM, our speed topped out at 47.4 miles per hour. Best cruise was reached at 5000 RPM and 33.5 miles per hour. At that speed, the 15.4 gallon power fuel burn worked out to be 2.2 miles per gallon and a range of 313 statute miles. In acceleration testing, she came up on plane in an average 4.3 seconds, cruised through 20 miles per hour in 7.6 and 30 in 12.2. Backing off the throttle showed the 280 Dauntless staying on plane right on down to 8.8 .8 miles per hour. With the twin 300s and 16 by 20 props, the speed topped out at 58.5 miles per hour. 
best cruise was remarkably comparable with 3,500 RPM and 33.8 miles per hour. Now the 15.8 gallon per hour fuel burn meant 2.1 miles per gallon and 308 miles total. Both of these results take into account holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 160 gallon total fuel capacity. As for acceleration, the twins are quicker off the line with planing speed coming in at 3.4 seconds, 20 in 4.4, and 30 in 6.4. Well, I'll tell you what, for a bay boat, this is an exciting boat to drive. Very responsive to the helm. Only quarter turn, maybe half turn, gets you into the turn that you want. Five degree bank into the turn, maybe, but she really responds nicely to that turn. Doesn't feel like she's glued to the water, but you can feel the stern kick around to get that turn initiated. See, we've got four turns lock to lock. So from center to full turnover is two turns and I'm saying you're not even gonna need that it's it's very aggressive on the steering I like it that way and it's very light on the steering plus steering knob is always a great feature to have don't need to be aggressive on the trim either you can either use auto trim or I like to do it manually so I brought it up to speed got it up on plane bring the trim up to 12, 10 12 on the gauge that's right in front of you and that'll put her in her optimum angle you can see the spray go from midships to the stern so the bow comes up just a little bit and that gets her into her nice running attitude and she's very comfortable at that speed whichever way you choose to power the 280 dauntless there's no arguing that she's a definite competitor in this highly demanding market segment she's made even more attractive by her many improvements to the model but that's in another video be sure to look for it for now, this is my full performance evaluation and sea trial of the all-new 280 Dauntless from Boston Whaler. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve, and we'll see you on the water.